Hey guys, it's Mr. Tanuki here. Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Spyro, A Hero's Tale. On the last episode, we started our adventure, got a dragon egg, learned how to destroy dark gems, met Hunter. We did a lot of stuff and this episode, we are going to be uh, continuing to stand by this deformed penis shaped rock. And we're going to go into a dialogue and we're going to learn how to use the dragon egg. So let's talk to the professor over here and see what we can do from this point on. Spyro, this is an activation pad for my latest invention, the Bomb Gadget. Of course, to operate it, you need to collect eight power stars. Power stars? Never even heard of those. Oh, uh, then how about red coins? No? Heart pieces? Gold tokens? I'm at a loss, Spyro. Uh, what exactly do you need to collect? Uh, I don't know. Light gems? Fine. You need eight light gems. Anyway, off you go. I'll open the door to the nursery for you. Once you have the light gems, approach the pad and the ball gadget will automatically activate. Okay, so we've learned that we need to collect light gems. Now, he's opened the door to this nursery where you can see a light gem. Um, you may remember last episode, as I stated in the beginning, we collected a dragon egg. Hmm, what is it that nurseries do? Do they take care of babies? Children? I wonder what a dragon egg could be. Could that have a baby dragon in? Oh, I wonder what the nursery will do then. Stop, please. Stop right there. Hey, what's going on here? It's those thieves again. They've just stolen the last of my dragon eggs. Dragon eggs? Oh, yeah, I found one of those. Maybe I can find all the dragon eggs for you. You know, I'm going to be out saving the world anyway. Well, at my last count, there were 80 of them. Ten eggs to a set. If you can find whole sets, I'm sure you'll be rewarded. Okay, so as she said, we need to find 10 of each dragon egg. We currently have the pink flowery one. I don't know if there's a way. No, there doesn't seem like there's a way to check it. Uh, I think if you speak to her again, she will check. Now, before we move on, as you will see once we go through here, this will lead us back to the start of the world, where we're going to be focusing mainly on collecting chests and destroying that dark gem that we found by Ember. Uh, but I want to explain something quickly before we start doing that. Or I guess start talking and do it while we're doing it. This thing here, I have a theory about it. Now, hear me out. This might sound a bit far-fetched. I think this whole adventure is a dream. Now, here's how I've come to this conclusion. The professor made a gadget, which he doesn't know how to power. Spyro is the one who chose what powers that gadget. Don't you guys think that's a tiny bit strange? Don't you think that's a bit uh, set out? I like to think of it kind of like lucid dreaming. Now, if you don't know what lucid dreaming is, lucid dreaming is basically uh, where you're in a state where you can control your own dreams. I like to think of it kind of like meditation. Um, yeah, and like I said, you can only carry one lockpick, so I'm going to use that quickly over here. Uh, I'm going to plan to unlock all the chests. Anyway, like I was saying, lucid dreaming is kind of like meditation. It's a state where you know what's going on in your dream, and you can kind of control it. So you're in a dream. Usually things will happen that you're not quite sure about, uh, but when you're a lucid dreamer, you know what's happening. You can control it. You can say, okay, now I have superpowers, and you will. That's what it is. I think this is Spyro having a lucid dream to make himself the uh, the hero of the Dragon Village or wherever we are. I don't. I think it's called the Dragon Kingdom. It must be called something like that. And also, we've got a lot of uh, dark gems, so we can not dark gems, normal gems, so we can easily unlock some of the uh, the things. I will actually go through here again because if you remember, there's a chest through here. So that's my theory with that. Let me guys, let me know what you think, guys. Do you think that sounds too far fetched? Do you think it makes a bit of sense? There we go. There's another dragon egg. So we're collecting a lot of useful stuff. Do you think it makes a lot of sense? I personally do think it makes a lot of sense. Not just because it's my theory, but I do think... Because why would he make a uh, a contraption? Let's let's just call it a contraption from this point on. Also, what's with all the penis-shaped rocks? It's kind of a, kind of a bit worrying, Sierra. <laughs> it's kind of a bit worrying. Why would he make a contraption uh, that is meant to power by one thing? Power stars. And then it is... 
um, than someone else who has no say in the contraption and likely wasn't even there when it was theorized or whatever. What? How can they know what else would power it? It doesn't make sense. If you think of it like that, you you know, uh, you just got to think uh, that there's not a lot you can uh, you can do with it. It just it just doesn't make sense if you think about it like that. Uh, I don't think I want to go this way just yet. I think I want to go up on the hill to unlock a couple more chests because as you saw I've got another lock pick and there's a hill uh, which you haven't seen yet in much detail where is it I think it's just uh, around this area isn't it yes it's just around here there is a hill you saw me get up here to unlock the chest uh, but as you can tell by the fairy and the door there is some more stuff we can get around here and uh, we've got enough to get two more lock picks now that's pretty awesome actually also uh, this is a good time to mention it if it's not a dream, how would enemies suddenly just appear in like a puff of cloud? And how would nothing be done about it? There's clearly dragon elders, which are obviously quite powerful. They'd obviously know what to do in the event that like their kingdom was invaded. So why have they pretty much just sat back and let it happen? I'll tell you why. Because Spyro is a lucid dreamer. If you think about it, it makes sense. It really does. That, and like I said, it's not just me saying that because it's my theory. Also, there's a little hole in the wall over here, which I want to quickly investigate. I realise that the hole in the wall kind of looks like uh, belly buttons. Uh, I'm going to be... I don't think I'll try 100% in this game. But I want to try and get as close as I can. Because uh, I'm pretty sure, like... Uh, most of the game revolves around trying to find uh, chests. Okay, so there's a dr okay, there's an archer which we need to avoid. Uh, but we got him now, yay! Okay, destroy that. That gave us nothing, did it? Okay, there's another archer over there. We'll get the dragon egg quickly. That'll take us up to three dragon eggs. We're doing really good collecting stuff, though. I've got to say, like, I don't think I've ever collected stuff this fast in the game before. Uh, granted, like I said, the uh, the last time I played it was years ago when I was a little kid. Uh, but, you know, I, I'm never really good at collecting stuff in games, as you know if you watch my Let's Plays. Also, this is going to lead us to another bit of dialogue, but we need the light gem. So... Spyro, you found the secret entrance to my lab. Well, I'm busy right now, so let me show you the not-so-secret exit. Now, something I also forgot to mention, because... When I was a kid, I used to just like run around in there because I used to think there were secrets. Uh, but something else I haven't yet mentioned, which I think, I don't know, you might find it somewhat interesting. It's just a bit of, this whole game basically is nostalgia for me. This was easily my most played GameCube game. These fairies, you may remember in the first episode, her dialogue said something like, uh, when I zap you, you'll lose a million brain cells. I used to think, I didn't, I couldn't understand that that was a joke. When I was a kid, I used to think when she actually zapped you, you lose a million brain cells, so you can only save a limited amount of times. So that's what I thought. Um, obviously not like in your whole playthrough. I, I thought it'd be like, you know, uh, once per once per time you turn it off. Or maybe it's kind of like the, uh, you know, the thing, the fourth wall in, um, in Mario Galaxy 2. If you don't know what I'm talking about, occasionally in Mario Galaxy 2, Lover will say stuff like, um, you know, you, you maybe you should take a break by, na like, by now and stuff like that. Uh, maybe it's kind of like that, like kind of foreshadowing the fourth wall and stuff. That's usually what I thought. Um, I think we've collected almost all we can do. Uh, there is some mini games. Something I do like about Spyro Heroes Tale is the fact that it's not just Spyro. There are other heroes. Now, I know that in a couple of the Spyro games before this, they did do stuff like that. Uh, but I think they did it so well because they did it mini games. There is one that I don't really like, and that's the one uh, with like a mole. Uh, the character's like a mole, and I don't really like that uh, because I found I just found these games boring. I don't know. Um, wait, maybe I can still make it. I think I might still be able to make it. Yes, I can. Okay, wait, that, I almost messed up. Okay, grab the light gem, and then we'll blast the thing. Uh, where's that going to take us? That's over there. Uh, I wonder actually if we can glide from this point on. Uh, we probably can. Yes, it looks like we can. I think we've collected everything in this area, which is awesome. Now, we do need to come back at some point because we need to talk to that penguin. But now, as you guys have seen very, very many times, we are going to go back to where we met the Elder Thomas. Uh, I believe that's how his name was pronounced. And we're going to actually destroy the Dark Gem. I don't think there's any... Um, there's any boxes like in our direct area at the moment 
uh, that we can get. But once we come across them, I will be unlocking boxes. So uh, don't be too concerned about boxes not being unlocked. Uh, if I don't do it straight away, I will come back to it. Anyway, so let's talk to her. Oh, she's not going to say anything to us. Okay, let's just destroy this and then she should say something to us. And as you can see, once again, another example of it changing everything. Okay, let's see what she has to say. Don't take that bridge to the swamp, Spyro. If you do, I might never see you again. Foreshadowing! <laughs> Maybe I spoiled something by saying that. Okay, uh, so that takes you to the swamp, which is the next area. Um, I don't know if there's anything else I want. Um, do I have another lockpick? Yeah, I do have a, lo a lockpick. Uh, thi I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and unlock a box um, up ahead. And then once I've done that, I'm pretty sure um, I'm going to... I'll just meet you guys back... I'll, I'll skip to when we get to the box, and then I'll meet you guys back at the bridge. Okay, so pretty much it looks like we've actually collected all of the boxes in this area. I'm surprised, because I'm pretty sure that there was more. I'm almost certain of it, so there's got to be some hidden somewhere. Um, anyway, let's go back to where we were. I said I'd meet you, but then I thought there's no things that I can, like, cut to. So I might as well just, like, run here with you. Running, 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 and running, running, and running, running, and... Yeah, like I said, she's forced shadowing uh, that she will disappear. Um, she's still there at the moment. I think once you head into the swamp uh, and get to the point where, like, sh the, the area's actually been loaded. Oh, yeah, I remember this. I'm pretty sure this one contains a dragon egg. I'm almost certain of it. I'm almost... Oh, it contains a light gem. Thanks for looking, making me look like a liar game. Oh, my God. Okay, so there's a firework over here, which should um, activate over on the other side. She's still there. Yes, she is. Yeah, like I said, I'm pretty sure once you get into the point where the swamp's actually, like, loaded on the screen, um, that's when she disappears. I don't know where she's gone. Uh, I've never actually completed this game. I've come quite close to completing it. I think I've got up to, like, the second to last area. There's a water area. I'm not going to talk too much about that because it might spoil it. But there's water area in the game, and uh, I've got up to that. Also, it should be mentioned... Um, this isn't relevant to you guys, but my neighbor's dog is outside, and it's very squeaky. It's one of those squeaky dogs that just, like, makes you hate yourself. You know, you know the one. I feel like every neighborhood has a squeaky dog. Like, dogs can either be really, really loud barkers, or they're really squeaky. It's like, it's literally like, <laughs> like, well, not really like that, because that's kind of like a, a, a monkey having an orgasm. <laughs> But uh, it's kind of like that. It just gives me a headache. I just felt like that should be mentioned just because it's it bothers me because it's every night and it actually like makes me feel uh, like I'm going uh, somewhat insane. I think once you step onto this platform, this is what takes you uh, to the swamp. Now they've got little. This isn't an, an example, but they ha do have little pieces uh, like this throughout the game. Basically, I like to think of it as a way of like disguising the loading screen. Um, because you haven't really seen any loading screens, have you? Because they get it in a subtle way. It's like elevators and things like that. And this is, ladies and gentlemen, the swamp. And now that we have saved, I'm just going to quickly destroy that. And I will meet everybody back here next episode. Hope you all have a good day and goodbye. <laughs>